Hello, and welcome back to Conquering Finale. My name is Jason Lafredo, and we are once again tackling the text tool. Today, we're going to talk about the standard text frame. And if we go to the text uh, tool and select a text block and go to the text menu, it's the thing in the middle here called standard frame, and it will always be checked by de default. Most of the time, we're going to want to use a standard, not a custom frame, but I'll talk about custom frames in the next video. Um, and even with it checked, if you select it, we will pull up the standard frame dialog box. And there's a few things going on that I will talk about uh, later in this video. Uh, before I get too much farther, I do want to mention that the frames uh, will apply to both page and measure attached text blocks. So everything I'm about to say in this video will apply to both. Now, in order to understand the standard frame, one thing that we do need to understand is the difference between an unbounded versus a bounded text frame. Now, when you double click in your score to create a text block, you are creating an unbounded text block. And you'll know it's unbounded because you can actually keep typing and it will keep on going to the right, even off the page as you can see. Now it won't print on that second page, it will just uh, stop at the border there and you'll get nothing uh, past that whatever sixth word it is. Um, and this will keep on going to infinity. You can keep uh, typing and it will just keep going off to the right. So that's basically unbounded, it's literal. Um, we can always press the return key to get to a second line and we can actually just keep pressing return key. And again, this will keep on expanding to the right and it will keep on expanding downward as much as you keep pressing return. And in fact, if I were to keep on going, this uh, unbounded text block will eventually go off the page on the bottom as well. Uh, so, you know, these unbounded text blocks are, you know, fairly unwieldy. They are literally unbounded. They will go to infinity in either direction. A bounded text frame is, is something different. And in order to get a bounded text frame, we're going to add it differently in the text tool. So instead of double clicking and just getting a cursor to start typing, what you want to do to get a bounded text frame is to double click hold and then drag out a sort of rectangle or square, whatever shape you want it to be, um, however large or however small you need it to be. And when you're ready, just release. And now you've created a bounded text block. And you'll see that eventually the words will wrap when you get to the boundary. That's because this bounded text block is not going to expand to the right. So as soon as you get to the end of the line, it's going to wrap the words to the left. That's the biggest difference between a bounded and unbounded text block. And if I were to keep on typing, you'll see that eventually it gets to the right again and goes to the next line. And I, it will do that without pressing the return key. You can also press the return key to get to a new line. Uh, just like any word processor. Now with these bounded text blocks, when you get to the end and you keep going and it creates a new line, that's going to disappear because the bounded text block is basically, uh, it's going to hide anything outside of these boundaries. So that's why uh, you can get in a little bit of trouble, particularly on the downward side, uh, because part of the text can get uh, swallowed up. The other thing you may notice about this bounded text block is that it looks different than an unbounded text block in terms of the border here. You'll see that it's sort of a double border versus a unbounded text block just has a single border. So that's how you know whether or not the text block uh, is bounded or not. Just get rid of this gobbledygook. Now I mentioned the word wrap, right? So if I delete here, so I just got to get the word bounded text B-L-O-C and when I type the letter C, it's going to uh, put that word on the second uh, line because there is a word wrap here. In the text menu, there is an option for word wrap. And interestingly, if you turn that off, so now it's not checked, and type B-L-O-C, <laughs> the C and the K and everything will wrap. So it will actually split the word in half. Not a whole lot of use to this. Possibly if you're using music fonts for a certain thing, maybe you don't want to wrap the whole text because, or, or the whole word, because Finale will define a word as any string of characters that does not have a space in between it. Um, so if you're creating a string of music characters and you still want it to wrap, uh, you may need to actually turn this off. Um, but most of the time, leaving word wrap on um, for any text is going to be what you want to do. So in addition to unbounded and bounded text blocks, we can actually have partially bounded text blocks. And to get a partially bounded text block, what we want to do is double click, drag in one direction, either 
horizontally or vertically to a certain point without creating a rectangle. So if I just drag out to the right here, I'll create a bounded text block just on the right and left side. So now you can see sort of a double border on the left and the right, but a single border on the right, which means that this text block will wrap like the other bounded text block, but it will also keep expanding downward if I keep typing, um, letting it wrap, pressing return. Um, so this is really useful. You can kind of control the, the width of the text block and not have to worry about um, the, the, the bottom cutting off any extra text that you end up uh, creating. It's also theoretically possible to create a bounded text block in the vertical, and you'll see the double line here, but the single line on the left and right. And this has some weird usage because, again, this will keep expanding left and right as long as you keep typing until you press the return, and then it will go on to the second and third line, et cetera. And eventually, um, you'll get to a point where it doesn't show up. So. Um, having a partially bounded vertical text block like this sort of has some limited usages. I'm not even sure if I would be able to come up with a good usage for it right now, but uh, it is possible to do that. Now, once you have a bounded text block, and we double click here, ooh, double click the handle, there we go, um, to see this border, it is possible to change this border. And with your mouse in the text block here, if you just go over to the right just a little bit, eventually your uh, cursor mouse will turn into a double arrow left and right like that. And then all we have to do is click and hold and drag to the left or the right to expand it. Now you won't see uh, it feed back correctly right away, but as soon as you release, you'll see that the text block got expanded. So now that last word uh, will fit on that first line and we can do it the other way, drag it inward uh, to get it back to the way it was. And we can do the up and down as well. If you uh, drag just to a certain point, you'll see the double arrow and then click and drag to expand or contract the text block. We can also do it in the corners too. So if you just get right in this bottom corner, it's possible to expand it outwards that way as well. So you can expand both directions. We can also use this method to um, turn an unbounded text block into a bounded text block. So now I've got my cursor in my unbounded text block. I can go right to the edge here um, to get that double arrow again, click and drag. And this will now turn this unbounded text block into a horizontally bounded text block. So it is possible to do it that way. And of course, we could do that uh, vertically as well. And now we've just created a completely bounded text block out of an unbounded text block. You can't really do it the other way unless you go into the, uh, the standard frame window. So that's where I'm going to go now so I can show you the first thing about this standard frame window which is the second and third option where it says expand horizontally and expand vertically. These options are related to the nature of the bounded versus unbounded nature. So with it checked, you're essentially creating an unbounded text block because you're allowing it to expand horizontally. Uh, so you can see how you can, if you wanted a horizontally or a vertically expanding text block, but not a horizontally expanding text block, you could set it up like this. So this, this would actually be the only way to convert a bounded text block into an unbounded text block is to check both of these options again. And now we've just uh, turned this back into an unbounded text block. Now I'm just going to go back into this bounded text block. I'm going to make this a little bit shorter again so that we get two lines here. And related to all of this, the bounded and unbounded text blocks, uh, I do want to talk about justification because there are um, some important relationships between the text blocks themselves and the justifications. The justifications are available for both unbounded and bounded text blocks, but they behave slightly differently. Um, it doesn't matter if you're using a bounded or, or unbounded text block. You can always justify left, right, and center. Uh, in fact, if I take, take this bounded text block and justify right, you'll see that uh, the whole text block is now justified to the right edge of the uh, bounded text block. We can also do that with an unbounded text block. This one's unbounded, right? Yep. And we'll do uh, justify right. And there we go. And you'll see that it will still justify to the right. It's basically just justifying to the, the farthest right character, which is the D in the page attached word. Um, so that's what's going on there. Even though there is no you know, bounded edge here, it's still allowing you to justify right. We can always justify center as well. 
uh, justify center. And there are these uh, shortcuts here for a Mac uh, command left and right brackets, um, uh, single quote, um, semicolon, shift command, semicolon for the forceful. Uh, let's do center here. And that should uh, center the, the, the justification for these, uh, for these lines. Now, of course, justification is more often useful when you have more than one line of text. So sometimes, you know, it wouldn't really make sense to justify an unbounded text block with only one line. It wouldn't actually make it any different. Um, but uh, it, it's usually when you have more than one line where the justification uh, comes into play. And so let's just set this back to left. I'm going to put some more words in this text block here, if I can get in there. And more, more words. <laughs> just don't know what I'm typing here. Um, and let's actually talk about the other two types of justifications. We have full and forced full. Um, now, these will behave slightly differently between bounded and unbounded text blocks. The full and forced full will be available in, in the bounded text blocks, but only the forced full will be available in unbounded text blocks. So let's just take a look at uh, the full justification in a bounded text block. If we do that, what we'll see is that um, the words are now justified you know, to the left and to the right. You may, may have seen this in, in certain places. Um, this is what full justification looks like. Usually, if the last line doesn't have enough words to get to the end, it will not justify the last line. That's how uh, full justification works. Uh, and there is a difference between full justification and forced full justification in this way, that the last line will indeed uh, be justified as well. The forceful justification will indeed work on an unbounded text block like this. So let's go here and forceful. You can see that it, it will do that. And essentially what it's doing is similar to the, to the right justification. It's just finding the, the longest line and justifying it to uh, that point. Um, you cannot, however, uh, full justify a, um, uh, an unbound text block. The reason for that is because it's kind of technical, but in order to get a second line in an unbounded text block, you actually have to put a carriage return uh, between the first and second line, which is why the full justification won't actually justify a line if it's been carriage returned. So that's, I think that's the technical reason why you can't full justify a unbounded text block, but you can forced full justify an unbounded text block. And there was one other option there. Let me just do this here. Let's do forceful justification. You'll notice that single words usually don't get justified. However, with this option uh, at the bottom here, expand single words, um, you'll see that the, uh, the, the quote unquote words that I created here, the gibberish words, um, it is a single word and it gets justified by expanding the space between each letter of the word. So that's, uh, that would, uh, that's what a full justification or a forced full justification with expand single words would look like. Uh, one other thing I should mention is that you can't actually uh, partially justify a text block. So if I wanted to say select these two lines and try and center justify them, it's not going to allow me. It will center justify the entire text block. So the justification actually uh, does apply to the entire text block. The other thing I should mention, um, I mentioned this in the last video, I believe, is that you can pre-select the alignment. So when you uh, enter a, a text block, if you want to preset uh, preset the alignment to center, you can also preset the justification to center. So now when you uh, click a, a new text block, um, not only will it be center aligned, it will be center justified as well. So uh, you can preset the justification as well as the alignment before you uh, add, add a text block. So let's go have another look at the standard frame window here. Uh, I'm looking at this page attached text block and look at the other things going on here, which is related to the border. Um, so you'll see that it says show border, but clearly there's no border around this text block. So what gives? Well, in order to see the border, there actually has to be a line thickness to the border. <laughs> and Finale sets it up like this. By default, it, it's showing the border, but it's not giving you a, a thickness of the border. It's set to zero. So in actuality, to get a border, you have to change the line thickness. And usually something like 0.01 is a pretty decent start. And you'll see a border there. Now, this border has rounded edges. That is because in the standard frame window, the rounded corners is checked by default. But if you don't want to see that, just uncheck that and 
and your corners will be a lot squarer, which is what I usually prefer. And uh, there's another option here, the inset. So this is how we're gonna get this uh, border a little bit farther away from the, the edges of the text. So we can inset, let's say 0.05, and we'll see that uh, that text, or that border gets pushed away a little bit. So this is a very quick way to put a box around any text. And it will work the same whether or not you're using uh, bounded or unbounded uh, text blocks. The difference between doing it on a bounded text block, if you look at the boundaries of this text block, it's definitely there's definitely more space here between the you know the left part of the the W here and the right part of the E here. Uh, so doing so adding a border like this on a bounded text block uh, will indeed follow the uh, the boundaries of that text block. You can kind of see that the the uh, border is drawn exactly where that. Uh, that double line sort of is. So that's kind of um, uh, an interesting little uh, difference. In fact, I believe if we expand this out to the right a little bit, but we uh, add some carriage returns here to get this a little bit different, um, what we can end up with, oops, what we can end up with is sort of a border that, that you know, goes much more farther left uh, and right of the words, then it goes up and down. So there's a little bit of uh, clever manipulation you can do with these bounded text blocks uh, versus the unbounded text blocks. So, uh, so that, yeah, that's what's going on there. And yeah, so that's uh, that's all there is to it. Um, like I said, measure attached text blocks work the same way. Um, in fact, if we go to a, a sign to measure, we can do the same thing with a bounded uh, versus unbounded text block. And actually what's kind of nifty with these measure attached text blocks, if you really want to do this, what you can do is very carefully um, create a text block by double clicking and dragging so that it's just the width of the whole measure. Now this will ensure that your text block will never spill out over to the right of the measure. Uh, I can't type here. Never spill over the measure. There we go. Uh, so you can kind of see how that works. If you if you bound the text block, the measure attached text block to the to the edges of the measures, um, you'll be able to confine it within the measure. So that's really a, a, a kind of nifty thing to do with these uh, measure attached um, uh, text blocks as well. All right, so yeah, that's uh, that's all there is to the standard text frame. Um, hopefully this has helped. Hope, hopefully this has illuminated some interesting things about text in Finale. Um, I think this is something that not a lot of people are particularly aware of, particularly the idea of bounding the text frame and how that relates to justification and all that stuff. But uh, now you have some more tools in your toolbox for dealing with these text blocks. So there you go. So once again, thanks for watching. The next video we're going to do will deal with the custom text frame, which really has some kind of limited usage. It will be an advanced video, um, some weird things, that, weird maybe fun things that you can do with the custom uh, frame here instead of the standard frame. So I'll show you that next. Uh, so once again, thanks for watching. My name is Jason. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you soon on the next Tackling the Text Tool video.